Hello everyone and welcome back to another Wizard 101 video. Today doubles as my kind of announcement video mixed with uh, going over some dev notes for the future. But before I get into that, let me uh, kind of explain a little bit. So first off, there's a background in my videos now. It's just there, just... I mean, it's just a sheet hung up on my wall so that it doesn't look as ugly in the background. There's that. So, that's change number one. Number two, I'd just like to say, did you know that only, like, 30% of the people who watch my videos are subbed? That's kind of cool. I kind of want to make it, like, a goal to try to get 4,000 by the end of the year. I know that not a lot of you are subscribed, so if you do subscribe, uh, go for it. I know that it's completely possible to reach that by the end of the year, so let's try it. But, otherwise... The main thing of this video is the fact that I, later today, am going to be in a King's Isle roundtable with some devs and another fellow YouTuber. Now you can see here, um, there is a PvE and adventure roundtable hosted by White Tiger. I'm also there. You know, I'll be there interacting, asking questions. It'll happen about two hours after this video is uploaded. So if this is uploaded at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it happens at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure to tune into that. Um, ask some questions if you want to. I know the devs are taking questions in the chat sometimes if they feel like it's warranted to answer it. So feel free to do that. Otherwise, join me there and uh, listen to the kind of roundtable. But otherwise, what I wanted to go over today was um the, these dev notes right here for november 2021 which kind of pertains to the round table that we're doing but is interesting for the future nonetheless so basically these dev notes are on the plans for the future in regards to pve and adventuring which is pretty cool so i thought we could go over them kind of i give my thoughts on what they could change or what they're going to change obviously in the round table we're going to see some of that later but i'll give my own take on it and go over these dev notes myself and kind of give my own input over the past year we've made several changes to make it easier to meet up with wizards to coordinate adventuring with friends and family and to improve the overall adventuring experience our driving goal was that playing with other wizards should be fun so the first changes they made uh, were to the combat schedule, making it easier to join existing combats and giving benefits to sharing them with others. This includes health, uh, mana wisps, and whatnot. Uh, we improved the grouping system. We added the friendly flag. We created volunteers to help with dungeons. We introduced adventure parties. And finally, we improved the quest journal. All very important changes and all made the game much, much better in my opinion. All these changes were really really good for the game overall and pretty solid changes but what i want to focus more on today is what's next much of our existing effort has been dedicated to the more social aspects of adventuring and we will continue working on that front with other future group related systems this includes how to find wizards that may be worlds apart and how to coordinate and play with them and then finding ways to improve aspects of group combat to make the adventuring experience more rewarding. Getting people together and making adventuring more fun is great, but we also need to look more closely at the core adventuring mechanics, such as moment-to-moment -moment combat, the questing experience, and various aspects of progression. We have a couple guiding principles to light the way. Create an environment where players can make compelling choices. If the choices aren't meaningful, when then are they really choices? And if there are no real choices, then what is meaningful in the gameplay? And if it's not broken, don't fix it. Both pretty good philosophies to live by. You know, they, they don't want to change things that are already kind of existing in the game as is right now. So starting with compelling choices. Compelling gameplay revolves around giving the player choices. These choices must be informed and meaningful. We went through similar thought exercises when looking to PvP combat, which led to the introduction of Rochambeau. For more on Rochambeau, check out the dev diary, whatever. As we deep dive into adventuring, we start at the beginning by outlining the choices that a wizard must make, which includes which school should I choose? Which spells of my school should I use? Which spells from other schools should I use? Of those spells, which should I advance with spell elements and how? What gear should I wear and how do I get it? And are the monsters I fight challenging enough for my choices? So these are all incredible questions. I think that these are all like exactly what King's Isle needs to focus on right now. And I really hope that they take these to heart and they really try to focus on these changes. Because I'm going to I'm gonna give a reason right now why each of these is negatively impacting the game. Which school should I choose? Right now, school identity is at an all-time low. There's no real reason why you should pick um, Storm over Myth or Storm over Fire, Fire over Storm, right? You may be like, okay, well, Fire does more, the most damage. Yes, but a Myth can do a Fire's do job just as well, honestly. Maybe slightly less damage, but they can still do it. A lot of people severely underestimate other schools, I've noticed. When you join a, dar a Darkmoor run, they'll always make the Fire Storm hit, even if, say, a Myth has 120 damage and everyone else has 60, which is just not 
how it should work. And I think that King's Isle kind of wants to make those roles that people have like put on the schools more prevalent, more prominent. They want to make it so that schools actually matter overall and you won't pick like say an ice wizard instead of a life wizard because an ice wizard can do a life wizard's job but with a little bit more health and resist. You get what I'm saying. Overall, I would say that uh, this is one of the most important things to focus on. Which spells in my school should I use? This is important as well because so far right now in the game at this stage, all we use are four pip AoEs and seven pip AoEs. Anything else we use is if we get a shadow pip. At least that's how I work. That's how many other people work. Um, four pip AoEs are fantastic, obviously using them against all mobs, and then seven pip AoEs are the best thing to just use against bosses because most times you don't get a shadow pip before the end of the boss. The only exceptions are boss that has, bosses that have cheats that will make it so it's better to use other spells. Which spells from other schools should I use? In this case, it's like every single wizard should train faint. That's really what spell you should use. And then for more defensive schools, you maybe train Seder, you train Tower Shield, something like that. And it would be good to have more uh, more options in that regard. Of those spells, which should I advance with Spellamus and how? As of right now, nobody's advancing anything with Spellamus. So I imagine it would be good to actually, you know, beyond just making more Spellamus paths, is to actually focus on that and how and make more things drop Spellamus. What gear should I wear and how do I get it? This is a problem where we only really upgrade our gear four times throughout the game. At least that's how most people do it when it's optimized. You get Zeus gear, you get Waterworks gear, you get Darkmoor gear, and then you get Dragoon gear. There's only four separate times you upgrade gear and they want to focus on changing that. I know that we've talked about a gear audit in the past. I imagine they're going to do a gear audit and they're going to try to make it so that it is more diverse and more spread out. Are the monsters I fight challenging enough for my choices? A lot of people have this problem as well, where they find Wiz to not be challenging enough. And I hope that in the future, they're going to focus on this as well. Maybe make it a difficulty setting instead of just improving the overall difficulty. Because I know some people also don't want difficulty to improve. There are these little sections here that I'll just glance over. The career of every wizard starts with choosing a school. Is it a meaningful choices? If we have seven choices, but three are clearly better at adventuring than others, then realistically there are three choices, not seven. Exactly what I was saying. Really, if you think about it, you can eliminate half the schools there. Uh, for example, balance, for example, is just objectively the worst school. It doesn't have anything that it's the strongest at, I would say, besides maybe blading, but that's not even important enough to warrant choosing it. So, realistically, in a lot of these, you could say that there's only six choices. So, I think that they want to change this and make it a little bit more balanced in regards to what schools you pick. The early spells. Early in a wizard's career, you make choices about which spells to use. Again, are there real choices here? Is there room for improvement? If I have 25 spells that I can use, but only three are usable, then I don't have 25 choices, I only have three. This is really important to me as well, because in my opinion, there is only, say, out of my 100 fire spells, I only use about 10 of them. I think that that's something they wanna fix and they want to broaden the range of spells. Advanced spell selection. Once a wizard understands the strengths and weaknesses of the primary school and what it can do and cannot do, then they may decide to pick up some spells from another school. You have to look at the spells available and which may shore up a school's weaknesses and build its strengths. This is clearly identifiable array of strengths and weaknesses is what Roche and Bose establishes in PvP and may provide similar advantages in PvE. I agree with this as well. There's a limit to how many choices can be presented before it comes unmanageable. The Rochambeau provides you a direction as to which schools can look at, yada, yada, yada. Basically, um, they want school identity to be stronger and they want you to be able to pick other choices if your school identity doesn't exactly line up with your needs. Here we come to the spell elements uh, section. For those who don't know, spell elements provide spell progression for the spells and which have them. As you accumulate spell elements, you can increase functionality of the spell and occasionally be presented with a choice to determine what way you like your spell to progress. There are aspects of spell elements which provide the power of forging a new path, such as which spell should I improve, where do I get these spell spell elements, and how do I want to modify the spell I choose to improve. So there's different choices that you can actually pick, but one thing I want to focus on here is that wizards should have choices about where and how to acquire the spell elements they want. This means that King's Isle at least has it in their head that spell elements should be more easily acquirable. As of right now, spell elements are nigh impossible to get. They're dropped extremely rarely from extremely rare and uncommon bosses, and I think they recognize that and they want to make spell elements much more common, which is, in my opinion, a really good idea. 
so I hope that they focus more on that in the future. Next is gear. You've decided on a primary school and the spells you want to use. You then picked other school spells to use, which contribute to your overall strategy. And so finally, you'll choose gear with the properties which enhance the choices you made before. There's a few different choices a wizard has to make when considering gear. What properties or stats do I need? When do I need to upgrade my gear? And where do I get the gear I want? This just kind of shows that they are planning or they want to focus on when we get our gear and potentially getting gear more. I think that this is incredibly important to focus on right now because as I've said, we only upgrade our gear four times. I think it would be much better if it was something a little bit more than that. Like I know um, in a lot of other RPGs, I'm upgrading my gear constantly. I get like a new drop and I just equip it, right? And I think that that's what they kind of want to do is they want to make it so that there's, there's, there's a lot more gear sets that are much more valuable and important to use. Next is smart monsters. All these choices should influence your chance of success in combat, but this also creates the potential for overly easy combat for experienced players. I agree with this. Some of the current encounters may not be up to the task of creating compelling combat for well-readied wizards, so we're considering ways to add new encounters that are smarter and identifiable in their difficulty. Our idea for smart monsters is to have them make more intelligent combat decisions, which then give the wizards corresponding choices more meaning. Once in combat, you make choices leveraging the initial decisions you made in terms of school, spells, spell progression, and gear. The smarter monsters then react accordingly. So basically what they want is they want to improve their AI. They want to make their enemies in the game right now smarter. And this is a really good option because I think a lot of people, when they focus on the question of how do we make combat more difficult, they always focus on things like health, cheats, stuff like that. But what they don't focus on is just simply making the AI better. If the AI is better, say it uses the right spell at the right time, it uses blades at the right time, we'll potentially see some pretty good changes to the difficulty of combat. Like I know, for example, when you see a boss just saving its pips or blading, right? It has 14 pips and you're like, why are you blading right now? Or say it passes on the round it could have killed you. Why does it do that? I think it's a matter of the AI isn't smart right now and they want to make it smart. The AI is very random very inconcise. They, they want to make it structured and better. What if it isn't broken? Looking at the second of our guiding principles, we know many wizards enjoy adventuring experiences with its captivating and funny storylines and the exploration of new and exciting worlds. For those who fall into this category, fear not, your playstyle and enjoyment of the game will be preserved. You have the choice to engage in new and more textured adventuring experiences or stick with the experience you know and enjoy. So, what this means, just based on this line, my theory is is that they plan on making it a setting to do. So like how in Pirate 101 has fast combat, uh, Wizard 101 will have something like difficult AI or smart AI or something. And if you turn that on, the AI acts and engages differently um, because they want to keep that common ground where people who don't want it to change, it won't change. And for the people who want a bit more challenge, it will change. I think that this is a really good idea. And I think it'll make the game a lot more dynamic for a lot of people. I don't know exactly how they would implement it yet, but we'll see. And I think that it's pretty darn cool. This is just the beginning. It covers it for now, but expect future dev diaries to cover these topics in more detail. So those are really the dev notes for right now, designed by Artie, the lead game designer, who will be part of the live stream I'm part of later today. So let me know what you think about this. I think that these are pretty important things to focus on, and I really hope they continue along this line, because these are some of the biggest issues right now in Wizard 101, is actually the core aspects of the game, and I really, really hope they focus on it. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. That is it for today. Join the live stream later today. Support me financially on Patreon and go join my Discord server. We're at 300 members having a good time, but that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Adios.